Hey guys, today's video is going to be a collective fragrance haul. It's kind of a small haul, but I decided I would film it anyway. So I got VIP private show because I heard that it was significantly different from private show and it totally is. And a big reason I decluttered Sunset Fantasy is because this is so similar to Sunset Fantasy. Before I even went on Fragrantica, I thought it, and then a lot of people on Fragrantica were saying the same thing. Very, very similar. It has mango, blood orange, which I think is just grapefruit, red apple, violet, orange blossom, magnolia, raspberry, amber, woody notes, and musk. So just a very juicy, fruity, playful fragrance. I think also among the stars is one of the main people that made me buy this fragrance because they did say that it is their number two Britney fragrance overall. Anyways, the, it's not too apple -y. I would say it's very much mango and grapefruit type of citrusy, fruity floral, and it's just really pretty. So definitely prefer this one more than Private Show. They are completely different fragrances. Then I got Rocker Femme Fantasy. So this was in and out of stock on FragranceNet. I eventually found it on Mercari for a good price, so I ran. Like, you guys, I got the notification. New arrivals for Rocker Femme, and then I just checked out with the quickness. And I'm so pleased with this, you guys. This is my favorite fantasy I've tried thus far. So, this has been described by people as fantasy, very, very similar to fantasy, but just a bit deeper, and I completely agree with that statement. So, fantasy... It seems to have so much of a different composition. It has kiwi, keens, right, lychee, uh, white chocolate cupcake, but this one is very different. It's described completely differently as whipped cream, coconut, blackberry. It doesn't have any kiwi, doesn't have any of those other fruits. And I said this on my Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram, by the way. It's my fragram. It doesn't smell so much like a berry fragrance like you know i'm trying to think of a berry fragrance like it doesn't smell like black raspberry vanilla from math and Moderics in the sense that oh this is a berry fragrance this one's just a little bit more mature but i think overall the fantasy line is not for people who are looking for sophisticated complex deep fragrances so even though i'm calling this deep like take that with the grain of salt this is just very pretty you guys honestly i love the packaging i'm considering very very hesitantly considering decluttering the original fantasy i think it's iconic i think i need it in my collection but they're so similar that i don't think you need both either you're the og fantasy person or you're the rocker femme person next is a purchase that I bought off of someone on Mercari. I got it for a really good deal. Shout out to her. But this is Yehlan's La Petite Robe Noir Au, Au Fasha. Au Fasha. But I didn't get a cap with it. I knew that it was advertised as such. So I wanted this because of the notes. The notes sounded so interesting. Let me read some of them again. So it has a citrusy opening. Then the middle notes are cherry, strawberry, peach, raspberry. It has all these florals, roses, freesia, jasmine, almond blossom. And then the base note is very nutty. It has pistachio and almond and tonka bean and patchouli. Guys, I maybe I don't know what an eau de is, so I'm going to look it up really quick. So eau de translates to fresh water. The most diluted version of fragrance, usually with 1-3% to perfume oil and alcohol and water. Huh. Okay, this is why you should do research, and I'll just buy things without researching. But eau de parfum contains 15-20% to pure perfume essence. And I knew that. I knew EDP is stronger than EDT, which has 5 to 15%. That's why I typically don't buy EDTs, but EDTs should still be relatively strong, of course, but just not like an EDP. Oh, Fauche lasts for less than an hour because it has 1 to 3%. 1 to 3% perfume oil dissolved. That makes a lot of sense. So I understand that it won't last as long, but I guess that also means if there's less fragrance oil in the fragrance that you may not smell all the notes. It's not going to be a strong fragrance. Even, even though it already lasts one to three hours, it's still just not highly concentrated like the other types of perfumes. So now that we know that, that's very good to know. It explains a lot. So going forward, I don't think I'll buy any more off washes. I don't hate this at all. I just wish I could smell the nuttiness. I wish I could smell all the complexities that were in the note profile, but you don't. It is just a citrusy floral perfume. If I knew that, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Let's move on to my two replica fragrances. So, you know, I'm broke, you guys, so I can't afford to get the bottles right now. I told myself, you know, if I use these in 
completely use them up, then I'll know that I really do love the fragrance and I'll feel more comfortable comfortable purchasing the full bottle. But first I got Matcha Meditation. And so this is a very unique fragrance. It immediately opens very much. You can smell the matcha tea powder as if it's just right in your face. So that's kind of what I mean by powder, but it's not baby powdery. It's just kind of like the matcha tea powder. And you immediately already smell that white chocolate, that sweetness is coming through. The tea, the initial tea explosion does fade away over time. Some people don't like that because they want a tea fragrance and they want it to smell very herbally and very tea-esque for the whole duration of the fragrance. I like that that dissipates because it is kind of a lot, but I love the opening. It's very fresh and it just makes you feel good, but it does dry down. And you still smell the tea, of course, but it's just more balanced out by the florals and by the white chocolate. So I love this one so, so, so much. This is Coffee Break by Replica. I was not checking for this fragrance at all. I, I don't know how to feel about coffee fragrances. I'm not a big coffee person in general, so it's not like I'm into coffee fragrances for that reason. And I also thought I was anosmic to coffee. In Coffee Break by Replica, I can smell the coffee. There's also lavender in here. I said many a times, lavender reminds me of aromatherapy. I love going to the spa and getting a massage. If they ask me what scent I want, I always say lavender. I have lavender essential oils, but I don't want to smell like too peaceful or too serene or too much like home fragrance. I freaking love this, you guys. This is signature scent worthy it's my obsession like i dream about it sometimes i'm kidding but i'm not it's lavender coffee right imagine a lavender latte imagine it because that milk is another note so it's like a lavender latte the coffee in here is so yummy it smells like a really good high quality coffee it has tonka bean and benzoin my loves it has vanilla cedar vetiver so all of this makes it sound like it's gonna be such an earthy, like woody type of fragrance. You know, with the patchouli pepper, it has this cypreal oil, an earthy, aromatic, woody fragrance. Like you guys, when I tell you it's mainly milky, frothy, lavender vanilla latte and the orange blossom, I forgot to mention that. It's just so good. I think all of Mesa Margiela's fragrances are unisex, I think. Actually, I lied. They're not all unisex, but this one is. I could totally see a man wearing this, but... And I love that it smells slightly masculine. I, I like that about it, but it's not too overboard. Like, Jazz Club by Mesa Margiela, I sampled that, and I really did like it. I loved the tobacco and the... Was it rum? But... I did put it on my skin and it was just a little too masculine. But wear what you want. I know tons of women who wear that fragrance and they probably smell amazing and iconic. But this, it like warms up on my skin and it does smell more feminine the longer you wear it. When you first spray it, to me, it does pull a little bit masculine, but it gets warmer with those base notes coming in at the end, the vanilla, the vetiver. If you're not a lavender or a coffee fragrance person, you might change your mind. Okay, last but not least is Balenciaga's Flora Botanica. I just made that up. <laughs> it's just Flora Botanica, I think. So, you guys, I stalked just about every video review, Fragrantica review, Instagram review of this fragrance because I wanted to know what this would be like because it's just such a unique fragrance that i was really worried but it's also so popular like all types of people like it gourmand lovers like it sophisticated people who only like niche fragrances love this one it's in a lot of people's top 10. i was scared to blind buy it i like to blind buy every now and then i just wanted to do my research so the notes are top note of mint middle notes of rose carnation cannabis and base notes of vetiver and amber. You know, being in college, I don't like the smell of cannabis. So I was like, hmm, how is that gonna work out? I mean, there's all different types, but I just wasn't sure how it would pull. Also, I've talked so many times about how I'm iffy about rose. Like if you're gonna do rose, I want it to be interesting and there to be so many other components. I don't want it to just be a rose fragrance. So I took a chance and you guys, 
I actually love this. So I can like any type of fragrance. I can like a citrus fragrance. I can like a green fragrance. But I just didn't have much experience with it. So I just wasn't sure. But this is very, very unique. There's nothing else on the market like it. I mean, I haven't smelled every fragrance, but come on. You know, minty cannabis with rose and amber. Like, it's just such a specific composition. And it just works, you guys. This is perfect for spring. I love the packaging. I got this off of someone on Mercari. It's only red on one side, which I thought was interesting. You do smell the cannabis, but you also smell the rose. It's just kind of all watery, green, it's all kind of mixed together, but it gets even better as it dries down. Like, I love how it smells in the beginning. It's just very green, very fun, slightly minty. Not even slightly, like, it's there. It's all there. You start to get the amber vetiver. Obviously, it's the base note, but you know, it truly does progress into that and it does get warmer. And the amber is a really nice amber. Sometimes I don't like how companies do it, but the cannabis does fade as the fragrance goes on. Again, still present, doesn't disappear, but it like fades as it goes on and then the amber starts to envelop it and it's just really, really nice, you guys. The cannabis is so present in the beginning that I feel if you wore this around certain people, they would definitely be like, what is going on? That was it for my fragrance video. Those are basically my reviews because I've worn all of these and given them a shot and you know, that's how I feel about the fragrances. I think all of them were hits except for Elf Hasha, but that was just my fault, so. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any of the fragrances I had in this video down below, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.